What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Cutlass Board Games channel. Just recently, I announced the release of Murders at Tear Woods Manor, uh, which has been a big project, and I've been working on it a very, very long time. But I wanted to record this kind of a devlog type video to talk about one of the greatest challenges with this project. It is kind of a funny story, and up on the screen, I have one of the first messages I received on Board Game Geek from Rod. Uh, Rod has turned into one of my favorite people. Uh, and I, I want to talk a little bit about this story because I think it is interesting. But basically, uh, Murders at Seawood's Manor was five years from, from original prototype to completion now. And in about year three of that time, we ran a Kickstarter and it did really shit. Uh, it did not fund, it did not get anywhere near funding. Um, and since then, it's been a struggle to try and finally get it uh, to stock and for sale. And we finally got there last weekend at PAX 2024. And that's what I kind of talked about in that previous video. But I want to talk about this other behind the scenes thing, where, what it's been like for me as a designer to get through this kind of journey. And the first thing is Rod. So um, I will read out the message and I always can be kind of small on the screen, but uh, Rod sends me, hi Keith, your murders at Seward's Manor looks great. I realize it didn't make the Kickstarter amount needed. I didn't even see the game until after the failure of the Kickstarter. What is the chance that you'll be able to publish the game in the near future? In lieu of that, is there any way I can purchase a prototype of the game? This looks perfect for my gaming group of four players. Thanks for anything you can do for me. Now, this is a lovely message to receive as a game designer because you're always like, yeah, of course, man. Uh, here's some print to play files. Here's, here's some stuff. Now, Murders at Seward's Manor has like a bunch of awkward components. It's got a ton of tokens. Uh, and then like whether or not you're going to actually go and build the foyer wall board, which is what the characters kind of slot into, or the clock or like any of this kind of stuff, uh, it, it gives me pause, right? And that's kind of why I never really did a print and play version. But I'm like, for Rod, I could make something happen. And I had actually sent a lot of the manufacturer files that I had to a friend of mine, Alan Cheshire, shout out to Alan and, and Centennial Games, because he has like a big workshop, has a whole bunch of different tools, and he just kind of wanted to build a copy. Um, and, and like part of that helped give me ideas as to exactly how I wanted a final manufactured version to look. But for Rod, I'm like, uh, I don't really know what you've got access to, what kind of things you can make, how viable a print play is going to be. Also, at the time when he first messaged me, I'm like, we've just completed the Kickstarter and we've already committed to making the thousand copies. It shouldn't be that far away. Uh, and that was that was kind of what I said. I said, it, sh it shouldn't be that far away. It shouldn't be that big of a deal to actually get a copy. And then here's what he replied. Uh, now, this is some months later after I said I might be able to make a PMP. I haven't really... Also, this is not every single message, but this is what he said. Uh, Hi, Keith. Any news on Murders at Tewards Manor? I would love to acquire this game. Do you have a sample copy that you'll be willing to sell to me or have any ideas on how I might acquire a copy? At my age of 75, I don't know how long it will be before I'm unable to play games anymore. I would so love to have a copy of this game to play with my grandkids. Thank you for any help or news that you might give me. Take care, Rod. I'm, I'm like sobbing at this point. I'm like, okay, fuck. I now have this additional gigantic time pressure of Rod needs to live long enough for me to be able to deliver this game. Now, this is around the time when we've just like, you know, given up on the Kickstarter uh, and we have our manufacturer sample, which you know, I have here with me. And we're working with the manufacturer to get the proper final finished thing done because there was a lot of things that weren't quite correct. We had a Z fold board instead of like a proper DM screen. Uh, they, there was no staircase included. That was the thing that couldn't be made. And we have no um, clock hand uh, in, in the foyer wall board and like a bunch of other little things. The, the card stock they gave us was like paper thin and a whole bunch of things and I'm like, this needs to be fixed. And now this took nine months. All of these things fixed and completed took nine months. Uh, and then there was like a bunch of little other art things we wanted to do. Like we had to go and change the, the reminder cards and upgrade them, all this kind of stuff. In this nine month period, R Rod messaged me on Board Game Geek once a month, unfailingly. And I don't open the thing very often, but 
very much it was like hey i'm really excited about this can i get any updates i remember you said a pmp might be possible can you make that happen for me and the whole time i'm like we are so close to just getting it printed i would so rather you just have the lovely final version we've spent all this time on and i'm stressing about it. i'm stressing about it the whole time until finally yesterday i get to reply and i get to say rod i can't tell you how excited i am to write this email I really did want to send you a print and play version, but every day felt like we were so close to getting the final version delivered. This weekend for PAX Australia, we finally got our stock in and the pre-orders will be shipped out this week. And as of recording this video, they have been shipped out. Uh, I'm so sorry that it's taken for this long. We were fighting to get things exactly perfect and now I am so proud of this final product and I'm sure you're going to love it as much as I do. I'm hoping this email finds you well and you should get a confirmation email really soon. <laughs> and I really do hope the email finds him well because when I sent this out, I'm like, I, I'm just waiting all day to get a reply from Rod because I, I hope that that he is going to be able to get his copy. And and he comes back with a reply that is absolutely wonderful news, Keith. Thank you so much. I am looking forward to it. I'm so excited. Now, for me, I'm an anxious creature. This kind of thing is very stressful because I'm like, I have this now big pressure because I want to I deliver a great game. You know, it just having not played it, right? Uh, for Rod to be so convinced that this was a good game in just the materials, the videos or whatever and seeing it come together and being like, yes, I need to have this so much that I'm going to keep messaging Keith and asking him when can I get this is a massive vote of confidence, right? Uh, I wish everyone believed in me as much as Rod does. I wish I believed in me as much as Rod does. Um, and, and that pressure can be a lot to, to try and actually you know, deliver a good product and stuff like that. And the added time crunch of, I don't know how long I really do have to do this. And it took us a whole year. Like um, from the, when pre-order was announced at uh, PAX 2023 to when now, we literally had stock to sell PAX 2024. So in that time i'm like oh my god i hope i can finally get a copy out to rod and we did it we succeeded um and i just wanted to share this because like this is a really special story to me um i've you know kind of talked with rod uh, a lot about this kind of project and what's going on and stuff like that uh and i'm really excited to see him finally get a copy um because you know it's nice to have people that interact with you in the community and, and tell you what's going on and then then be excited and, and feed that enthusiasm to you because there's just so much negativity that exists uh like for example castles of clara my first game was kind of released people were like yeah you know this is kind of nice or whatever um and then it got put on board game arena anyone that played it on board game arena hated it apparently um and the review scores dropped to like 5.3 or something last time I checked. It was just like, it's a 5 out of 10. My first game was a 5 out of 10. And I'm like, well, that sucks. I think it's much better than that. And a lot of the comments were just like, we just drew the top card and played it face up every single time and thought about it nothing. And all this game is entirely based on luck. I'm like, well, that's, that's really shit. And so it's super easy to get inundated with all this negativity when in the feedback. Everyone goes on the internet and just like blast people. It's really negative all the time. Um, I had a guy come up to the pack stall over the weekend and pointed out one of the games that, that we had for sale and said, this was my number one regret purchase last year because of whatever reason. And I'm like, fuck, man. Um, cool. Great to know. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it's really easy to get bogged down in all this, this negativity. I, imagine five years working on this project and it comes out and it sucks and, and it's shit and everyone hates it. And all, all like the millions of dollars or whatever that I've had to invest in making this come together. And all this kind of stuff, just for people to hate it, like that would, that would be insane. But then to have, you know, stuff like this, messages and, and bits of confidence and people being excited for it and hearing about it and seeing the lovely people playing it at PAX and having a great time, it, it helps a lot. It's a very stressful job, but it helps a lot to see people loving it and enjoying it and like feeding you that, that great positive energy. Uh, and so kind of the idea of the video is to just be like hey if you like a thing you should tell the person that made it that you like it in some way you know a lot of stuff is just as simple as like tweeting about it or you know posting somewhere or like hitting like on the posts that they make or whatever because it's really hard um being a creative and it gets harder every day um things like you know the cost of living and and so much ai stuff that's just like constantly trying to steal money from you creating things it's just feels like it's getting harder and harder um 
and you know like when will we ever be able to compete with something like disney we had lorcana next to us at pax and seeing the bajillion people run in and out for lorcana just because it has an ip i have no idea if the game's any good but it's like how unless if i have billions of dollars how do i compete with something like that and just having that satisfaction that i i am confident in my product i made a thing and i'm proud of it is a lot but having people give you that feedback and and feel that excitement back to you uh, really does really does help a lot it makes me very happy um and so that's why rod is one of my favorite people and and that's why you should be going and trying to get involved with creators and stuff like that and try and you know feed them with the, with the positive energy and i'm trying to do the same thing to other creators in my field i'm trying to help out as much as i can because i know it can be hard um and that's that's kind of it i just wanted to share this cute little story and and then hopefully we can all have a little bit of extra positivity today we can just, you know positivity thursday we can just enjoy this <laughs> for a minute um and then you know hopefully you can go and check out murders at Tewards manor if you want have a look at it um and then you know maybe i'll be making some other cool stuff that, that you guys can all check out soon